Hi guys, this video is about taking a character from Daz 3D into Unity 3D. And uh, if there's any noise in the background, it's because it's Chinese New Year where I am and there's a lot of fireworks going off. So you'll have to uh, pardon that. Um, I'm going to move my microphone a little bit closer. Might help. So, Daz Studio is very good for making these models. I'm sure you already know that's why you're at this video. And um, it would be great to get them into Unity. And actually, specifically, I'm trying to get them from Unity into the new Shooter AI called Shooter AI, uh, which is really cool. And I have linked this up with UFPS. So, this video is just a quick <coughs> thing to demonstrate that, right? Um, we will assume that you've actually finished your character, right? She's finished. Um, I that you should really decimate your character using the decimate plugin to lower the polygons, otherwise it'd be very high. Or you could use a plugin called Cruncher inside Unity, which is what I'm going to do later. So when you go to export, I'll call this um, YouTube Test Woman. So then I save that. And the options come up over here. So you want to embed the textures. Um, I've just ticked to uh, merge a lot of these, but the most important one is merge clothing into figure skeleton so that her dress and stuff becomes a part of her. Now her hair won't actually become a part of her and we'll have to look at how to fix that in a second. These polygons and vertices are clearly too high if you're trying to make even a desktop game. So as I say, you've got to decimate or something uh, later. Hey! So, I'm busy exporting it now. You can't see because it's appeared on my other window. But, um, it's finished exporting, so I'm going to load up. I'm going to go back to Unity. Now, this always takes a while because Unity is now important in the background. So, you can see the green bar there. Unity is actually doing something. And that's uh, because these models are extremely high quality. This is going to be a 25 megabyte FPX. And the <clears throat> texture vials, I think, are like 4,096 by 4,096 or, or 2,000 and something. They're huge. So you will want to go back through after you've done DAS and deal with that. But um, for me, I just couldn't be bothered to put that into the workflow. It's taking too long. I just want to get one working nicely and then do it afterwards. Now, Unity is deliberately struggling. No, it's really, really important something. I'll pause this for a second. Okay, so we're in Unity now. What we need to do is find the thing we saved. Where I have this split across two screens, so it's going to be very hard for you to see, so I'll try and compress it. So I type into here, uh, YouTube woman, and I'll find the thing which it's made for me, which is basically all a prefab or whatever, ready to go. Now you notice the textures are all weird and coloured, but that's actually because I've just done this previous to this video, and adjusted all of her textures, and because it detected the files, it didn't overwrite them, no. Because I've already made materials that link to them, they've stayed the way I did it, so... I'll briefly show that, but the first thing you want to do when you get the woman in is um, click on uh, Rig here and take the animation type and put it into Humanoid. Um, and that's it, just hit Apply. What this does is converts it into a mechanism rigged 3D model, which is really invaluable. And this all seems to happen automatically, which is really good. <coughs> Once it's finished doing that, this model will be totally compatible with Meganim. I think, anyway. So here we go. Uh, what do we want to do now? Well, let's let's uh, just drop her in somewhere into the scene. And this is the game I'm working on. It's called Genocide Dolphins. So I drop the woman in. She's tiny on my level because I messed up the skill. But for now, let's let's not worry about that. We'll zoom in. Um, we'll just turn her around a bit because the light is actually coming from over there, so you can actually see some of the quality of the effects. See her skin shines, her breasts shine, 
head shines, all looks good. <laughs> so, even the nice shoes, she's even got high heels in fact down here, but you have to sort of put them under the ground because they're a weird angle like that, but if you do that, it's all work. So you now got her, how do you make her into an AI character? The first thing you got to do is make her into a rag doll. So you click on her, and you go to game object, uh, create other, rag doll. Now you get this wizard here, which is a little bit annoying and looks a bit daunting, etc. But after you've done it for a while, not too bad. And you've got to use a bit of guesswork here. And I've done this about four times today, so hopefully I can get it right. <clears throat> right, so the root is a hip. The hips, that's what I'm using, and it seems to work. So you drag the hips to the root. And left hips, you can go to, uh, well, expand these so you see what you actually got. Left shoulder, left forearm, left hand. Right shoulder, right forearm, right hand neck, head, pelvis, left thigh, left shin, left foot, right thigh, right shin, right foot. Right, so now we have um, it all opened up. What would the left hips be? Well, I, I'm just guessing, but I'm putting left thigh. And this sort of seems to work. Left knee, so left shin we'll use because, oops, this mouse is messing up my day because it's not letting me hold down and I'm losing stuff left knee would be um, where's the leg gone? don't tell me I have to lay the leg no right so left knee would be left shin and left foot would be left foot damn this mouse right hips I will do the same as I did for the left, so I'll use the right thigh for the hips. Right knee, I'll use the right shin. And right foot, I'll use the right foot. So this is just defining where the joints will go, really. Left elbow. Now we can go out of the pelvis and into here. So the left elbow, I'm going to use left shoulder for that. No, sorry, left arm, I'm going to use left shoulder for. And left elbow, I'm going to use left forearm. And then right arm, um, <clears throat> right shoulder, and uh, right elbow, right forearm. Now the middle of the spine, I, I toyed with this for ages. What did I use in the end? I think I used chest in the end. Let's just use it for now, right? And head, you can actually find the head there on the neck. Right, so they're all done. Tedious, but not that hard. Now let's zoom on on here to see exactly what happens. Um, when you click create, it makes her into a ragdoll. Now that's curious because her legs haven't, uh, haven't worked. I've done that three times a day, and it's always worked, but the legs this time have not worked. Well, let's just play it and see what happens. Maybe the legs are there somehow. I presume her legs have been missed out. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. So she should crumble on a heap as if her, her legs don't exist. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there. It created the proper full rag doll. I paused it for a second there. It did create the full rag doll, uh, I think the recording software stopped it working. So now you can see there's a the woman has got a full rag doll. It's not perfect. You can go in and adjust them actually, um, as a quick example if I wanted to. But earlier I, I changed them and I and I found that they didn't it didn't act as good. So maybe you shouldn't uh, worry too much about that at this point, but let's say you wanted to change um the forearm one, you just click on uh, <clears throat> the forearm and you see the capsule collider there, you can turn it off and on. You could make the radius whoops, bigger or less, like that. <coughs> it looks like that would work, but actually I'm going to leave it the way it was. So this is the exciting bit, once you've made the ragdoll and you press play on Unity,